Enscape is known to be one of the most efficient rendering engines out there, but if you want to speed up your workflow and take your efficiency to the next level, make sure to watch the video all the way through the end. Before you start editing materials or lighting or all that other stuff, you need to think about the composition of the render. After you have visualized how you want each angle to be, make sure to create the cameras in the Enscape tab. To do that, you can click the view management icon in the Enscape toolbar, or you can press the F key as a shortcut and a new section would appear in your left side of the Enscape window. Click create view and name it to something that you'd be able to differ from the other views, that way it is easier to navigate through it. After you have created two or three angles, it would be much easier to go to your desired angle. Uh, the views you create in the Enscape window will also be added in SketchUp as well. So that might be useful when you want to change something on the modeling as well. The next tip is to create presets. Presets are a great feature in order to experiment with all the different feelings you want to give to your render. Let's say you want to test out which HDRI looks better. You can easily save the preset for each one of them and switch between the settings in two clicks. Let's first see how we can use presets. Let's open the visual settings in Enscape in the right side of the toolbar. After the visual settings window has opened, click the little arrow on the left side of the window and the preset section should come up. You can tell that Enscape has created one already for you, which is the one that you're already using. To add another preset, you can create a new one from the plus icon, or if you want all the other settings to remain the same, like the exposure, the contrast, etc., you can duplicate the one that you're already using and you can switch out the HDRI for it. To duplicate it, you can just right click the custom preset you already have and select duplicate. Now you only need to rename the new preset and you're ready to go. Once you set up the other HDRI in the new preset, you can easily switch between them with one click just like this. You can also save the preset as a file and that way you can use the same preset in other renders if you wish to. You can just right click the preset, click save as file and select your desired location that you want the preset to be saved at. Now on the other file you have to click the import icon in the preset tab and now you have the last preset on your new rendering scene. Okay, so now you have created the views and you have created the presets. But most of the time you will need different settings for each view and maybe the lighting is different or the other renders just need more exposure. To link the presets to your view, we have to open the view management tab. And this time I will open it through the F key shortcut and you can hover the mouse on the view that you want to link the preset to. After you hover your mouse, you can tell that you have an edit icon showing up that you should click. After that, you just click the preset drop down menu and you choose the one that you want to apply to this scene. This is very helpful and time saving as well, especially if you plan to use batch rendering, which is the next tip that we will cover. But before we do, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. That way I will post even more videos with tips that will be helpful for you. Batch rendering is a very practical and time efficient tool. In your architectural or ArcVis projects, you will experience having to render a lot of views, sometimes more than 10. This can be very draining to wait for each render to complete and then choose the other view again and again and again. To avoid this, we will use the batch rendering tool. Before we do, make sure you have set up all the presets and views like I mentioned before. If you've already done that, click the arrow near the screenshot icon and you have the option of choosing the batch rendering tool. After you click on it, you will have the menu which will essentially ask which views you want to render, after which you can click the render selection and all your views will be rendered one after one with only one click. This way you're saving a lot of your valuable time. TurboTop is an amazing tool that makes the whole workflow in Enscape way smoother, especially if you work with one monitor, which I assume most of you do. I am sure you want to be able to see your Enscape window while you edit the modeling itself in SketchUp or any other native modeling software that you use. 
When you put the Enscape window on top of the SketchUp window, once you click on any of the SketchUp tools, the Enscape window will minimize. Some of you might be using half the screen for SketchUp and half the screen for Enscape, but I do not like that since most of the time I am not rendering in vertical aspect ratio. Even if I use the Save Frame tool, the Enscape window will be taking a lot of the modeling space. For this issue, TurboTop is a great fix and we will see how that works. You can download this app in the link in the description and if you've ever downloaded anything on your PC, it won't be any issue for you. Once you have downloaded it, you can double click it to open and the TurboTop app will be activated. Once it is activated, you can select it in the right side of the Windows toolbar and you will have the option to choose the Enscape window. After we have done that, as you can see, now we're not having the issue where the Enscape window minimizes by itself and this makes the whole workflow a lot smoother for me. I myself don't use all the Enscape assets on every project. I only have a few assets that I use regularly, but I don't want to go through the whole Enscape library to find the assets that I want to use. Instead, I will use the favorite category that Enscape offers. This will save time as we won't have to scroll through 2,500 assets or more that Enscape offers as of now. To add your assets in the favorite category, you just hover your mouse on any of the assets that you use often and you will see the star icon show up and you can click it. Once it turns yellow, you can find the asset in the asset section towards the end of the categories. I use the same thing for the materials library as well and it's basically the same process and I believe that it saves a lot of effort over time. And remember, like all of these tips might seem very little seconds or very little time that you're saving, but when you're working every day on the same program, this adds up and when you look at weeks or months, this actually saves hours for you. So I would really recommend to use all of these tips that I shared in this video. So thank you for watching. Make sure to check out the Patreon, link in the description. Also subscribe to the channel, click the like button, comment if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to see you in the next one. Bye.